Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees. And today I want to talk about a couple of things and one of them is pollen feeding. And is it necessary to feed pollen substitute to your bees? And the answer is, if you put a sample out and they're taking in the pollen substitute, they absolutely do need it. Now, a lot of that depends, too, on how many hives you have. When you're running this many hives, there's only a small window of time where you don't need pollen and sugar water. That's about two weeks, and that's it. After that, the bees will start getting hungry because they deplete the area. And a lot of that, too, depends on where you're at in the country and how much natural nectar flow you have. Now, you should never feed sugar water to your bees when you have supers on that you're collecting honey. But pollen substitute is a whole different story. You can put out pollen substitute because this is going to generate new bees, more bees. And so that's very important. Uh, put you out a little sample and see if they take it. And there's different ways of feeding. You don't have to feed in a big system like this. Uh, this thing will hold, I think, 30, 40, 50, maybe 30 pounds. I think it holds about 30 pounds of pollen. It holds quite a bit. Uh, there's different ways you can do that. I explain in different videos. You know, you can put it in an empty hive and close the lid up, put a little bit of lemongrass to get them started in it. Uh, don't add, do not add lemongrass to your sugar water, but you can add one drop to your pollen substitute just to get them started in there. Now, you can see as these bees are taking this pollen, so they absolutely do need it. And I'm gonna show you what brand we use. This is the brand we use, it's called Ultra Bee. It's the best on the market, very high in protein, this is a brand new bag I just had opened up. I just went down to our store and picked it up. If you need any from our store, we have it. We sell it in big bags, 50 pound bags, and then we break it down and sell it in one pound, five pound bags. So if you need any Ultra B, just let us know. We can get you some sent right out. But this is the best on the market. There is none that's made any better than this right here. So let me show you something else here. Now to the to our new viewers, uh, this is what we used use to feed sugar water to. These are our barnyard bee round top rapid feeders. These things, bar none, to my opinion, are the best feeders on the market. These things right here, that go inside your hive. This is a feeder box that we make that you can make as well that go on top. This is a ventilated, while we're on the subject, because a lot of people have been asking us about ventilation and wanted us to explain about ventilation and why we use it. Ventilation in a hive is extremely important. It's important in the summertime and in the wintertime as well. Mostly in the wintertime, more than even in the summer. Now, this right here, th this sits, I'm not gonna be able to move it because it's properized down. But this feeder here, maybe I can see on this one. It just, it actually just sits on top. I can move this one over a little bit. It sits on top of the frames, basically. And it just, it's just a, a box. You can see that I just had to fill these up with sugar water. Um, and the box is made. It's got a big vent hole here. You don't need this uh, quite this big. A three quarter inch would be plenty, half inch even. Uh, here one on this side of course you got one in the middle that the feeder sits in and then the exit vent hole here and on this side here as well now you can see going back to the feeder a little bit how these bees feed it's an on drowned feeder uh, this little cup insert sits on top and it keeps the bees from getting out and, and they climb up the ladder system on the inside that's rigid that they can climb on and they feed, they carry the sugar water back down in the hive. They don't, they don't have to leave the hive to feed. It's non-robin, meaning a robin bee would have to go through 
the whole colony in order to get to this feeder, which would be extremely difficult. So these things work excellent. These hold two quarts. We sell these in our store. Uh, you can go to our website, barnyardbees.com, and get these. And we have sold tons of these. People love these things. We started using these about four years ago, and then we started offering them to people and to our customers, and they just, they love them. They do really good. So, of course, the lid goes down on top. And just make sure on those that you keep the lid down. Maybe put you a, a good cement block or something on them. Now, getting back to the, the vent ventilation system a little bit to explain it. Um, that one doesn't have a screen, and it's supposed to. We use, these are our Barnyard B entrance reducers that I've talked about before. Just kind of go over it a little bit more for the new viewers. Uh, these things get 100% ventilation. You don't have a wooden block that's blocking the airflow, and you can close, you can put as many doors in these as you like. Uh, what's nice about these, here in about a month when the dearth is on strong, dearth meaning there's no uh, nectar flow, there's no not much of a pollen coming in, and the bees are starving, and they're hungry, and they're robbing. Well, this thing works excellent for robbing situations. You simply close this main door, and it's got a little bitty hole right here, a little bitty door that you can open up, and this makes it very easy for these bees to protect to protect those uh, that colony. So, and you can put as many doors as you like across there as well. You can see on them, some of them, are, they're bringing in that, that pollen substitute. But anyway, the air comes in and then it goes up like a chimney and goes through the, the feeder and exits out. And the reason the ventilation in the summertime, of course, is to keep the colony cool. The cooler the colony is, the less they have to work and sit on the outside fanning because they'll, when they get so hot, they'll beard and they'll fan. But if you have a ventilation system, it's not near as bad. They still will beard what they mean bearding by coming out and covering the, the outside of the box because it gets crowded and hot inside. But if you've got a good ventilation system, it'll keep them cooler a lot easier. So remember that, very, very important. And then in wintertime, uh, what, what happens, your, your bee colony will cluster and if you would go out there in the winter time of course you wouldn't want to do this if you went out there in, in the colder weather and open the top of them put your hand down on top of those frames where that bee cluster is it would feel like a heater those bees generate 90 some degrees temperature inside that cluster and you would feel the heat rising up well in the winter time you get internal heat external cold they collide they cause condensation Condensation will drip on your colony and kill your bees. Bees can stand to be cold, but they can't stand to be wet. Remember that beekeepers, new beekeepers. That's another important thing about keeping your hive tilted forward. Keep it tilted towards the entrance. What I do is go level and then put like a two before underneath of it in the back. Uh, inch minimum, but more like an inch and a half, like a, like a two, but two before is actually an inch and a half. So even up to two inches. It's not gonna hurt to tilt that thing forward a little bit. You're better to go too far forward than not enough. And that also keeps rainwater, as it blows in, it, it'll come back out. Very, very important. So, that's ventilation explained. And the feeding the pollen, feeding the sugar water. Uh, right now we're, we're feeding the one-to-one -one sugar water. And the reason we do the one-to-one -one is it simulates more of the natural nectar flow and it keeps the bees keeps the bees feeding better some people believe in two and one that's that's fine if that's what you believe then then do that with us we go we go one to one that's what we believe generates more bees uh with mixing two to one you don't have to feed as much and if you're busy got a really really busy schedule and don't have time that may be your best option in my opinion it doesn't simulate the more natural nectar flow and and we believe at barnyard bees that that actually the one-to-one -one actually generates them to build more wax and to build up the colony faster so that's about it for today that's uh explaining our pollen our feeding systems uh if you need if you need the pollen you need the feeders go to barnyardbees.com we have them there uh queens 
just to mention about queens again we have queens from here all the way through probably till october november depending on how the, the fall goes you know with the drones it always depends on the drones and uh, call our store 706-971-2700 but anything that you need now is on, is on our website so just go to our website and it's a lot easier to purchase uh, queens and uh, hive top feeders and whatever you need but that's about it for today don't forget to click on the little bell uh, please help spread our videos and get these out to the new beekeepers it's helping the new beekeepers out we're trying to anything we know we're, we're trying to to let the new beekeeper know or, or the advanced beekeeper or whatever uh we're, we're sharing everything we know we're not holding anything back there's not many of us out here that does this and we we really enjoy doing it because we want to see people succeed in beekeeping so that's about it don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe that helps our channel grow thanks for watching barnyard bees